Talking to, are we going to rebuild our house? Are we going to sell our property? Are we going to, oh, it's like the worst. I got to figure it, we have to figure it out. I just took one to college. I'm like, oh, where, where are they going? University of Florida. Oh, Survey. Thanks so much for putting all that out. Together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'll put it together. I just. Um, do we, did they put their address on that as well? They did, right. Some of the, if they, they could opt in to do that, um, and some of them did. I just didn't share that in the raw data because uh, we would have to fill out an IGA, not an IGA. A, we have a memorandum, right. I was just curious do we have the capability to. Those yeah. Yeah. Choose all those responses. Right. technology can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a GIS can. Mm -hmm. okay. For sure. Well, some will be up there and some down here. Whatever you want to. I'll just take the All right. Take an agenda. So, <laughs> oh, so not to come back. Go on up. Yeah, go on up there. <laughs> Mayor? That would be the closest I ever come. <laughs> come to that. The older I get, the more I realize I'd be the worst politician on earth. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. Chrissy, you are you signing us in? How are you, sir? I'm awesome. great. How are yeah. you? I'm nice. great. Yeah. What's going on? Yeah. You're all cleaned yeah, up. You're like, coming from work. Yeah, I came from work. I had meetings <laughs> before this, and I was like, oh, I gotta, I gotta go. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I hear you. How are you? I'm good. I actually had a question. Do you know anybody, a girlfriend of mine's daughter, um, wants to ride Western, and it's not quite as popular around here? Well, I don't know like a single Western trainer. Does she want to just, like, think around, or does she really want to, like, ride hard, or what does she want She's to do? young, so she's in fourth grade, so she wants to start out. So I would say yeah. just see if she loves it before she... I, I got the guy. You do? Well, okay. Yeah. yeah, his name's Mike Evans. Okay. A real good friend of mine. Okay. And, um... We boarded um, where he boards at a barn um, in Canton. Okay. But it, you know, you know where a new bullpen. Yeah. Uh -huh. off? Uh -huh. If you go oh, down there towards the Union Hill, they're uh -huh. on here. It's they're right down there. Chair. Okay. And, What's um, the name of it, Lee? Uh, uh, the guy's name is David Gaddis that owns the barn. So okay. And they're they're uh, big team rooms. Okay. So he's got a big arena and all kinds. Of, okay. He's got cattle and all that stuff. Oh, cool. But Mike is the best person with kids I've ever met. Perfect. 
That's and, I think that she really. He'll put four year olds on his horse. He'll have them cantering around the arena, and they'll just giggle okay. and you know. That's perfect. That's what. Yeah. Fourth grade would be awesome. Yeah, because you want them to love it. Like, yeah. like just love it first. Okay. Yeah, you know. Let me see. Um, I can. That's awesome if you have it. Yeah. What I can yeah, do. Is, I don't know anybody like that to tell her to. Yep. He'll he will give her. He'll either um, book her and she'll be doing it for a long time, or you know. As, as Mike says, you know, they, they all come ride, and they'll ride for a month or two, and then I might see them again, or, you know. Well, she rode, and um, they moved from, I think, Mar Maryland, yeah. and they've been down here, I think, about eight months, and so she hadn't found a place yet here, so I know she likes it. Where do they it. live? They live in Kingsley Estates. I know that name. I don't know where It's up Freemanville. Oh. You yeah. know, those two subdivisions are together. It's the first. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's like the Hampshires um, and... Yeah. Chrissy Iron Horse also. Iron is Horse? English and West. Yep. Oh, both? So if, okay. If that doesn't work out. Have her look at both of those? Yeah. Okay. Give me your number. 770. Uh huh. 906. It sounds really familiar. 8195. Because I remember my oldest daughter. Okay, that's like enough lessons. to tell me these masks. Yeah. I wonder if that was with her. At Iron Horse? Could be. They had. Arabians. Yep. They have Arabians. Yep. Very cool. Thank you. Yeah, but they also have less than you, you gonna call They were in Canton, now they're in Milton. Um, I might just have her phone. So. Yeah. What's but her name? Megan. Yeah, and the last name is Lewis. Megan Lewis. All right, mm -hmm. I'll tell him. Yeah. He, he texted me this morning. They're, they're sitting at Rosemary <laughs> Beach. Right <laughs> there there go, but, uh, uh, it was so long ago. You know, I surprised my son. She's married and got two kids now. So. Yeah. I never heard like getting anything from this. I thought the bands might get them a little bit, but yeah, I talked to Jackson and Auburn today, and they were getting hammered. Did you see? Um, my girlfriend's in Tallahassee. She was getting a lot of rain, but it hadn't been crazy. But um, Pensacola got 30 inches in 24 hours. Did you guys see the new? I don't even know what to think about 30 inches of rain. It, it, I know, and I was like, when the sea level, together. sea level there, I mean, they are at sea level, yeah. right? And so 30 inches, That's and how I fast, mean. in 24 hours that came down? Jeez. I don't know. I think uh, that was... Keep, uh, this is later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if Julie is not here, who would like to run the meeting? Larry is not coming, and Susan King is not coming. Okay. Let Chrissy run. No, no, gosh, no. <laughs> I'd say Tony and Brian, they're like closest to the center. He <laughs> 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 wants to run. Susan, you want to run it? Fine. Susan, you might want to run it. I do not want to run it. Yeah, okay. Brian will do it. Yeah. I was going to say, it's not hard. Brian, you do it or I'll do it. It don't matter. Yep. Who are we waiting on still? I'm going to say a few words about Zoom. We don't even have a quorum right now, do we? It's important that everybody's talking your mic. Four, I think, is. Through, Susan's through right a mask. I know. I don't know. Um, we're not on yet, are we? No, no, I wanted to wait. Okay. So if we're not on, if we're sitting here, we don't have to be like completely masked, right? Hey, do we have to keep our mask on? You don't. I was just saying. I was apart. Okay, good. I was like, whew, between a baseball hat and a mask. We're all like can take it off, 15 so. feet apart here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah I'm like, oh, don't breathe in my vicinity. Right. Yeah. I'll stay we away. We're going to be on Zoom, so. so okay. Yeah. So no one's here. Correct. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Courtney, who, who are we? How are you getting your little sheep in and out of the pasture? Tonight? Do you yeah. have yeah. you want us to They're come staying back here in so there? We can each other okay. You got, like, it's okay. up here. And they've been the easiest to keep. Oh, you can come over here. All right. Let's just go down yeah. there. There's nobody else yeah. Not worried about coyotes. Absolutely. Then? That's like my yeah. chair for Okay, because I lost two goats. <laughs> I, yeah. yeah, exactly. Please no. Please. So you lost, you lost no. the goats no. with the. Uh, Before the donkeys. And they went on. So that's why I got the donkeys. No loss since I have no goats now. So after I got six, don well, I got four donkeys, and then two were pregnant. So then I had two babies. One I had to well, like fight to keep alive. So I was like, Ugh. and two, you know, I was just like, I need a break. And I was like, not ready for baby animals just yet. And I was so worried. There, uh, just make sure again, since we're, we're going to be on Zoom, to talk into the mic. I was worried that it wouldn't like I wasn't sure. So then I ended up not getting. Goats. <laughs> Staff yeah. seating only. And now, like, I've got one yeah. gone, and I was like, I don't think I need to take on any more animals. I tried to get an Irish oh, yeah. but my wife is really yeah, it's a good spot. What do you like, the Pyrenees? Yeah. Uh, you know, my brother has Pyrenees, and mm -hmm. he lives in Minnesota. Mm hmm. So I think. Uh, All right, Robert, I'm gonna go. You ready? Yep. 
Yeah, and I'm gonna say just a few words about us being on Zoom and. Hmm? Unless you want to. Okay. Okay. He's got the script. Yeah. <laughs> I got the script. Here we go. Good morning. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it does. <laughs> Tim, we're on the radio. Robert, can you turn the music off? <laughs> oh, come on. Come on. Then our meetings aren't going to look lively. Okay, with us. Is that your music? It was on the, it was on the computer. Bernie, can you tell when people check on Zoom? I can. Okay. It's just us. Mm-hmm. That's what Me I was and Robert. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Milton Equestrian Committee. I'll be uh, showing the meeting via Zoom. If you're participating that way, you'll need to, your mic and camera will be disabled um, until, you're, until you're called on. And if you'd like to answer a question during public comment, um, you can send a chat, and then uh, I will tell you how to unmute. Thank you. Go ahead, Brian. Brian Maloney, serving as chair for tonight's meeting of the Milton Equestrian Committee meeting held here at City Hall. I'd like to call, I'd like to call the regular meeting uh, to order for this uh, September 16th, 2020. Roll call. Mm-hmm. Oh. Larry Covington, Susan Day, Present. Susan Kimball, Chrissy Reeves, yeah. Tony Rich, here. Julie Shannon, Brian Maloney, here. Pledge of Allegiance? Mm -mm. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see, I believe we have, do we have a copy of the minutes from last? We don't, I don't have any minutes from the July meeting. Okay. Which is a reminder that someone will need to take minutes tonight and send them to me. Okay, anyone want to volunteer? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, let's see, is there any public comment? Mm -mm. Seeing no public comment, we'll go on to the next item, which will be new business. Uh, under new business, uh, item A, purpose of the Milton Equestrian Committee. Tony? Yep. So I added this to the agenda, I think as really just a, I think it's a good idea for periodically, I think, for us to discuss just why we're here. Um, not sure I'm getting a lot of feedback here, so I'm sorry about that. You know, we came up with a, uh, a, a purpose statement, right? Or a mission statement last year, I believe, Courtney. And, and that is published, right, on the, on the website it is. for the city. But I think it's worth having just a brief discussion to just remind ourselves why we have a committee, what our committee is here for. Um, you know, I, I think we're here to represent the equestrian community for our city. But other than that, you know, there are times when we have these meetings and we really have a pretty full agenda. There are other times where we really don't have too many items at all to discuss. So I just wanted to open it up for discussion and just kind of revisit the whole idea of why we have this committee. What do we really hope to accomplish, you know, long term uh, as well, you know, is in the short term. So if anybody's got any thoughts on that, I just think it would be worth talking through that. Well, Tony, I think, you know, for me, I think this is uh, one of the most important committees in the whole city of Milton because this is really the foundation of the city. And I really look at this committee as the, the energy, the brain trust to keep the horse in front of the city leaders uh, and figure out how we can promote that. Uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about uh, uh, later tonight was 
gosh, you know, just coming up with an, a list of things so that we can ask the city planners, hey, when uh, a new street goes in, maybe think of some horse names. Uh, uh, you know, as they're finishing up the downtown section here, you know, let's put some horseshoes in the concrete. Let's have a, a trail of horses. But it, for me, I think some of those little details and accents uh, as well as just encouraging them and keeping their focus on, gosh, what about some equestrian facilities? Polo fields, or you know, having uh, you know the uh, the arenas approved in an easily or an easy fashion, as opposed to making it you know very difficult. But I think there are so many uh, things that the committee. So I really look at it as kind of that that brainstorming. Uh, you know, I'd love to see a marketing component come out of this because. Boy, you remember, uh, I think it was, was it Leonardo da Vinci that said publish or perish? You know, but uh, uh, one of the things also tonight I want to talk about is just, you know, getting some type of communication between the equestrian community uh, and really circulating that throughout the whole community because then the whole community buys into the equestrian stuff. And just like we were talking about fireworks before, you know, gosh, you know, it's hard when you're more on the outside and you're saying, oh, you know, please, you know, I got horses. But if everyone in the community really buys in to the whole equestrian thing and feels part of that and then really understands the specialness of that, then they'll do it more out of respect rather than as a request. And no, I agree. I would agree with that. And that's kind of one component that I think is that part is so important. I think the equestrian com um, community most of the people that are in, the, a lot of the people, I should say, know each other in the equestrian community. But as just Milton keeps growing, we get more and more people that love the equestrian aspect but aren't familiar with it. So that focus of how do we keep them, how do we educate them about the equestrian and how do we keep them excited about equestrian and appreciating that aspect about of our community because I think as the more and more we develop and we know that there's a lot more subdivisions and less farms we want to we need to always keep the people that aren't necessarily involved in the equestrian aspect of this community at least appreciating it and supporting it even if they don't you know take part in it on a daily basis yeah that's why I, I think that the educational aspect is so important and whether it has to do with fireworks or living next to a horse farm what's appropriate behavior not that we're regulating people's behavior but just what's going to work better and um, speaking of trails you know there's a certain amount of trail etiquette that will have to be understood by everybody and there, there's just there's a lot that if you haven't been around horses a lot you really wouldn't understand and so I don't, I think what we have to do is, 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 as Chrissy said, include everybody, but not make it so the horses are so special, everybody else has to adapt because that's not going to work either. Like we have to find a way to all work together. And that's where the appreciation of the horses and the heritage and all of that comes in. So that's how I see it. No, it's good. I, and again, I'm excited for our committee. I think there's a lot of great things that can come out of the committee. We've had some, you know, some some great projects that we've worked on in the past. You know, the the, the cleanups at the trails I think have been a huge success. Um, you know, we had the equestrian um, fair, or I'm not sure what the right term was uh, last year. Yeah, at the at the fire department, I think that was wonderful. Um, I just want us to constantly, you know, challenge ourselves that you know we're here to try to promote and educate our community on our equestrian heritage and sometimes it feels like that you know we really have our foot on the gas and we're really trying to get that done and other times i feel like you know we come to these meetings and we just talk for 15 minutes about old business and we go home and i just feel like you know some of the and i got a lot out of the survey kudos to you brian you know for really pushing oh. that forward but I'm really, you know, interested in here in a bit to talk about that. But, you know, there are communities that are, I call equestrian communities. You know, if you think about, you know, places in Florida, you think about Aiken, South Carolina. Um, when you think of equestrian communities, you think of those places. You know, is Milton on that list? Do people think of Milton, Georgia as an equestrian community? 
I don't necessarily know the answer to that question, but there's a difference between being an equestrian community and just being a you know suburb of Atlanta that happens to have a bunch of a bunch of farms um, that are that are rapidly disappearing. Um, you know, one of the questions in the survey was, would you like your name of your farm published? or, you know, in a, in a book or whatever, I think 90% of the people said no, which I found really interesting. It's like, I don't know how you really build community and you really pull everybody together if everybody's just out there giving lessons and doing their own little, little horse farm, but really aren't trying to get to know each other and spend time together and do more organized activities and things like that. So um, I just challenge us to keep, keep talking about that. Yeah, and I and I love that. And one of the things that I played around, and I can't remember if I sent this out to everyone, but you know, just thinking about you know, creating a list of like the top ten reasons why Milton, you know, is a horse community. You know, I mean, it's steeped in horse history and culture. I mean, over in Freemanville, there was a blanket company for horses, and I think they made blankets for the Triple Crown winners and stuff. You know, but that's important history that needs to get out. You know, you can ride in a large preserve, you know. I think that property just went for sale. Oh, really? I think the one that makes the horse print. Oh, the, uh, the school the site? Property. The school property? No, the, oh, I thought it was the one before it. That yeah, the it. school. Okay. The, um, you know, but internationally recognized trainers, um, I think one of the things I would love to see is us promote equestrian holidays. You know, at Thanksgiving time, they have the uh, blessing of the hounds, you know, you know, and if there are other holidays that people come up with and really, you know, we should come up with a, a list and kind of brainstorm if someone's aware of any holiday that is equestrian related that gives us an opportunity to further market the, the horse stuff out. Um, and then once again, I think really just coming up with a list from our community that we can pass on to staff so that the city planners and everything, you know, as they look at naming roads, as they, you know, welcome businesses to the community, just giving us that horse pitch and saying, gosh, you know what, a lot of people, they love horse stuff, you know, uh, so maybe they include an equestrian name in their name or, uh, but I think there are so many things and I think, you know, if we all come up with lists like that and just uh, brainstorm and and I think as long as we include Courtney on our email then it's still a matter of public record but it gives us an opportunity to communicate between sessions. I was so disappointed that we weren't able to meet last month because boy you know when there's a lot of potential stuff going on uh, you know it'd be nice to have that familiarity and that communication outside as well. Good. Thank you, guys. Mm -hmm. All right. So having served on the Milton Trail Committee for years and created that and served as the, the chairman and then the most recent uh, reevaluation of that, I was really disappointed that there was no mention, no mention at all of equestrian trails on the map. And especially when I heard that the consultants had met with you guys, it was shocking that there was never any like, oh gosh, you know, we need a trail from here to here or anything like that. And that was really a shame because there's a pie of money and that could have been incorporated. So one of the things that uh, I had asked Courtney to put on the um, schedule was, you know, to have us begin that discussion of equestrian trails. I see people walking their horses on the road to get to Wood Road or, you know, and that's just not safe. I mean, and it doesn't take much to have a little path to have someone be able to safely ride a horse to a, a preserve or, you know, wood or summer road or something like that. But um, I don't know if this would be an appropriate time to we can roll out the map and if anyone knows of any farms near you know a preserve or a location or if you've seen you know people on the road you know we can kind of circle and kind of mm -hmm. pencil something in and, and kind of begin that discussion yeah and i brought um so i brought just different colored sharpies and a big map uh, that gis picked um they thought i told them what your uh, idea was uh, and they picked the best map that showed um 
it's big enough where you can read the road names and Wonderful. see where the neighborhoods are. So we can um, we can actually spread out right here. Um, but if we're gonna gather, of course, we will need to mask. But going along with your point, you know, why is this an equestrian community? Right. Equestrian trails are a very important component of, you know, I think of Aiken when you go there, man, you know, they have a lot of dirt trails and polo fields. And so if we can identify some areas and mark out some trails, then that becomes another asset for our equestrian community. Now, I very rarely am in Birmingham Park. But I used to see horse trailers on Wood Road a decent amount. Mm -hmm. I hardly ever see a trailer on Wood Road with horses anymore. Are you guys seeing that they're using Birmingham Park more? Or I'm trying to figure out where that traffic is going. Yeah, I'm not quite sure where that goes. I know but that do you, I'll do you still see, see it. Yeah, right? I'll still see road? some of the, you know, the people. I think they come from actually Hopewell over as well as from Freemanville up. Yeah, I don't know. Do, uh, you, know, we, do you take we, yours to Birmingham? We have. Mm -hmm. You know, we certainly have in the past. Mm -hmm. We haven't been there in a while, especially since they did some of the upgrades recently. Right. Um, we've been riding more on Brittle and Summit, okay. uh, which we can, you know, to your point a minute ago, we can get to from our, our farm. Now we've got to ride down Bethany Way and ride down Haygood Road on the side of the road, so we try to time it like on a Sunday morning or Mm -hmm. something to where the traffic's not so bad mm -hmm. but you know they're, they're still moving trucks and all kinds of large vehicles that go by at 60 miles an hour mm -hmm. you know hence the the conversations we've had in the past about speed limits around milton being an issue so i mean it's all part of a bigger challenge to try to figure out just how we connect some of these you know um really ideal riding areas to some of the non-ideal areas but you know parking's always been a problem um, you know, back when we were looking at the uh, country club property, you know, there was a push on the very front end to try to figure out a way to make part of that equestrian friendly. But it was like, where can they park? Where can people park trailers? Right. And um, I think we were at some point, correct me if I'm wrong, but advised that we needed to focus our efforts primarily on Birmingham Park. Birmingham Park. Yeah. Yeah. And then also some of the, the and I can't remember their names, but two of the newer purchases um, that those would be suitable for equestrian activities. And, and we were directed, really, to focus there. But the big picture is, when you come up with a trail plan, you come up with a cross-section of that road. It doesn't really cost much extra to say, okay, hey, can you, can you flatten out two feet over here for us, for a horse right. to go? And so that's all we need to do is kind of figure out, okay, hey, and that's where I, I kind of think, especially since we have four here today, maybe we begin that process and then we build on it next month. But the ultimate goal then is to submit that to council to be incorporated into the trail you know, plan. So that way the equestrian community truly has a contribution and a, a little wish list. But when they, even at some point, Birmingham Highway is going to be redone into a four-lane road. In the early trail plan, we said, okay, one side will be paved, and then the other side will just be crushed gravel for, for horses. You know, something like that we need to revisit, because I don't know that that's still in the, in the hopper. But it's those details that, once again, make us an equestrian community. So let's put our mask on and let's get together. <laughs> yeah, I need to step back and make a quick phone call. Is that mess up our quorum if I do that for just a second? No, no, we're not making any decisions. Okay. Just I'll coloring. be right back. Right. Sorry, I just want to close. Mm -hmm. Thank you. What's your favorite color? Mine, green. Green, ah, so is mine. No, no green markers. <laughs> okay. So black or red or blue? The yellow would be hard, I think. It would. I didn't realize that was all beige <laughs> when I picked that. <laughs> all right. Great. So Wood Phillips. Yeah, because gosh. I Does mean, that map have a name, like a specific that we're marking in? 
public and government infrastructure. Yeah, it's probably on our website. You know, I think, you know, one of the things that, uh, you know, here's the Phillips circle and really having some, some little connection between there makes a nice little loop, although people can go here. Here, the thing I've suggested is putting a uh, equine crossing mm -hmm. so they can have, you know, flashing light and a stop sign, but have it high enough so if you're riding, you can just push, push, the, button. push the button. So if you guys like that, I'll put the... Uh... Okay, so that is the question, though. Where are the people, outside of the people who live on that road, where are the trailers going to park? Because I know the residents of Wood Road... Well, have, I think... Have, I think so point of this is that they could ride from wherever they are to get to the But could road. they? Like how many people could ride? Like what farms? Well, so so that's that's the thing that we see now mm -hmm. is that people along here and then people along um, gosh, Red, where's uh, Bethany? So, uh, you know, Yellow Barn is uh, over here. Then you got that Western Barn here. These people will go all the way down red and then come all the way over. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I think having having a trail along here, uh, the question is how far down do you do you come? But once again, with a equestrian trail, the whole thing is us kind of just getting some stuff on the map, right. and then as that gets incorporated into the whole cross section when they go to redo a road and stuff like that, they say, okay, gosh, you know what, equestrian section here, so let's uh, flatten that out. But what, where does that money come from, like specifically? Well, so specifically, so let's say that if Birmingham gets uh, redone, right? then if the, our equestrian path is in there, the state will have to pay That's what that. I wanted to know. Does it come out of the bucket that's already pledged for Birmingham Park well, and the things? Is, no. This, this no, is separate. No. This is right, additional. Right. This okay. is a state road. I'm not okay. sure that that would apply for the smaller things. Right. That would be out of a Milton budget, would it not? So basically, you know, my hope is because there's so little, I mean, basically we're talking about creating a flat area. And so if you're just creating a flat area, the cost of that is really minimal. I think it depends where you are. I live mm -hmm. on New Providence Road. Right. And mm -hmm. directly across from where I live, the road falls off like right. that. And there yeah. have been, not lately, but there were numerous fatal accidents mm -hmm. because people would mm -hmm. yeah. not driving as fast now. And even where some of those streams are and stuff mm -hmm. like that, you know, with equestrian, you know, you could even make a fjord or something. So that was my question. Our initial, Courtney, do you remember what our initial expenditure was? That we went out. Yeah, do you remember that? That I don't. because um, I think we asked for twenty thousand. Okay. I don't. I don't know if we spent all that. But I remember Larry just it. He was surprised at you know he was hoping that more could be done for that twenty thousand. Right. Then and then I guess that is my concern is that like I know how fast that I mean sure. I know how fast that twenty thousand went away and things that we'd hoped that we could do more of. That's why I was wondering what bucket is it coming out of because it you know and and how many people will benefit from that twenty or that thirty versus right. if we do something at Birmingham right. Park or. And so the whole purpose of this exercise though is really to just gosh you know what you know boy this would be nice this would be nice this would be nice. Well, once once saying, you come up with a plan, then, you know, the implementation, all that comes down the road. But if you don't have something on a paper, right. no one knows that, right. oh, gosh, along that section, you know, the question people were hoping for this. And right. There's a Milton master plan mm -hmm. right, I'm that has all the trails, and I'm pretty sure a lot of those were equestrian trails. None, none of them were. None well, on the more. priority, right, it's, it, it, Prioritizes Birmingham Park. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as and trails. Riding and but the original, the the original Milton Trail. Yeah, and I was the chairman of that committee, and no, I no question related. And, well, and, and, when and, they did and, the public survey, the question came in way low, as I recall. Well, I remember asking the equestrian committee. You know, gosh, you know, we're doing the cross sections. Mm -hmm. You know, where do you guys want trails? And the report that came back was. 
We would never walk our horses on the road. They're too expensive. Well, no. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tony's like, no, no, no. this is the original. This is the, okay. but that's the message that came back to our committee and, was the. It was presented to me as a relatively new member that the idea for the trails was that the horses would be walking down Birmingham Highway, the side of Birmingham Highway. And I think that that's probably not super realistic, right. given the amount of traffic mm -hmm. and the fact that a lot of people here do have show horses that are not necessarily road savvy. Mm -hmm. Right, but there are a lot of people with the, you know, the the horse in the backyard that eats grass and they hop on it and they just trail ride. And that's, that's, those are the people who are probably gonna utilize a lot of that. If you're close to a preserve, you know, then gosh, you know, having some safe access to that. Well, for example, my, I keep my horses here. Mm -hmm. And these are all pretty much, well, that's a cow farm. A lot of horse farms here. Mm -hmm. It is so rare. And this is, uh, Westbrook is not paid. Yeah, it's a dirt road, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it is very rare that we see anybody riding mm -hmm. up and down there. And uh, there is somebody that drives a, a cart occasionally, but it doesn't get a lot of use. So I guess my question is, and this is part of the survey, how many people really are there who would use this? We don't know, mm -hmm. I think is really the question. We just don't know. Mm -hmm. And so since we didn't have that, and we were told to focus on Birmingham, Birmingham Park, we were like, that's what we were focused on. Well, and part of it, again, this is where I really do see the value in surveys, is trying to understand our demographics mm -hmm. in Milton, okay? Mm -hmm. And I, my timing was terrible when I asked to, to expand the Western category. Because none of that got in service. Right, sorry. So, <laughs> that was my fault. In I should have yeah. pushed it early on. But, you know, I really don't know how many people in the city of Milton in general would even be willing to ride their horse outside of the arena. Mm -hmm. The people that used to board with me, they were all too scared to ride outside mm -hmm. of the arena. Yeah, and that's very true. And, and it's like, you know, if, if people, if 95% if of our community stays mm -hmm. in the arena, mm -hmm. well, the city's probably not going to make a huge investment to try to get people out mm -hmm. and up and down the road, right? Mm -hmm. So we need to know more, and, and this again, this all kind of connect back to my my comment a few minutes ago about the purpose of our committee. Mm -hmm. Is like I love I love sitting around and talking about all this stuff. Sometimes I just feel like I'll sit around and talk about it, and then it's like, okay, see, they fun. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really know anything leaving the meeting that I did coming in, you know. Um, <laughs> um, but you know, we had a lady last year come into this meeting, and she gave this huge presentation about what we do, all these equestrian facilities, all this kind of stuff. And kind of everybody just went, "Well, oh, that's never going to work. Nobody wants to do that." Um, but I at least appreciated that one of our citizens came in. And I did too, actually. And we well, to just talk about something. <laughs> something. I know. Maybe it wasn't the right combination. That, of I think that. Yeah. There were well, I know that, but, but then that's fine. Yeah. But I wish we had five people a year that wanted to do something right. like that. And, and, you know, maybe eventually we come up with something that we can all get behind. Right. Um, and, and that's where I think we have to find out what do people want rather than us imposing our ideas. Right. Because mm -hmm. we may be missing the mark completely. Mm -hmm. And, you know, where we're not like places like Aiken or Wellington or whatever, I mean, Aiken has, you know, 200 years of history of being, uh, you know, the wintering grounds of, of the northern horse people. Sure. That's not what Milton ever was. And Wellington was designed specifically to be an equestrian community. And, I mean, I was there in the early 80s. It was not attractive. Um, anyway, we are not in that position. We, this was farmland. It wasn't necessarily foxing. It wasn't polo, other than Jack Cashin, who's not, wasn't quite enough of it. No, and I know Union Hill yeah. polo is just and, outside too. And so um, those sort of things didn't exist. There were, there used to be years ago, several quarter horse farms. Wilson Quarter Horses was a big one. And there were saddlebred farms. So there were these, you know, some breeding training farms 
for show horses. But in terms of a lot of recreational riding, I, it doesn't resonate with me that that's something that's really ever been around here, I guess. Well, so the question is, if, if, that, if we feel this isn't a question of community, I mean, so we got Birmingham Park and that's it. Well, there were two of the new purchases yep. that they were also talking about. Yep, there's the one at Providence. Providence was yes. the other. And then the other one that was, ooh, kind of big lake or something? Yep. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. That family, that was the family of Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that, that yeah, but I've been out there. That's pretty, pretty rough. The uh, and that's why I thought that. Gosh, with the trail, this cost us nothing to brainstorm and mm -hmm. and come up with a concept of a trail. Well, and, I will say when the um, trail consultant mm -hmm. last year came, and my kid was the lady that came. Right, in, the Christine. And she wrote the yeah, book and all that stuff. The numbers they came back with. I know. Were they they yeah. 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 That's My first reaction was, well, who in the world's going to do that? Yeah. Right. You know, so it was kind of like, well, you know, she's the expert and it cost, you know, $2 million. Which was my question wow. when we started. I was like thinking of all those and thinking what we did at Birmingham Park. I'm like, how do we justify how many people will use that versus how many right. people, how much we're actually going to have to spend to make it? Right. Safe and, and, and accessible. And I think the, the big advantage of coming up with something here is that if sections of the road are redone and they say, oh, gosh, you know what, you know, they want to have an equestrian trail, we're just going to flatten that out. Equestrian trail doesn't need any special surface. As long as it's flat, you can ride a horse on that. But, I mean, it, it's very different than the multi-use trail where they're talking about, okay, you need a sure. six to eight foot mm -hmm. wide but asphalt. But I think we also did talk about that between the equestrian trail and the road, there should be some sort of a, at least a dual barrier, yeah. which could be planting. It doesn't have it to be. Planting, it could be a, a timber. Yeah. Curve that there should be, be something to sort of clearly delineate traffic. Of course. Yeah, and you know, then you're getting really expensive because you know, if if the cross section for the road is here, then let's say you got a multi-use trail here, and then you have your flat area over here for the horses. Oh, it was not presented. Is there something else I can help with? Because <laughs> 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 no, no. they're always listening. It, it wasn't presented to us that it would be like this and like this. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and, you know, be the only exception would be on. like on Birmingham Highway where there's an opportunity to have something on both sides of the road mm -hmm. where maybe you got a multi-use trail on one side and then all of a sudden you got that equestrian, yeah. that nice wide, you know, six foot wide equestrian path on the other side. And that's where on that Birmingham side, if it's in a plan, when they go to redo that, mm -hmm. They have to include that as part yeah, of the thing. I mean, On the other things, it's just something that you know we we'll have to, you know, kind of see. But if if it's not written down on paper, if there aren't some thoughts, and it's not like, oh my gosh, if we put some marks here, that's going to take away from Birmingham Park. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. But I think the true needs of an equestrian path are very simple. I mean, give us a two foot wide flat path. What what more else do you need? That's off the road. You know, I, nothing would ever be right on the side of the road, mm -hmm. but, you know, I think that's... You uh, know, it would be really interesting, I just, just had a thought, to talk with some of the big farm owners mm -hmm. and trainers, I mean, and Julie would be at mm -hmm. the top of that list, to talk to, the, to Carolyn, what's her name, over at Yellow Barn, yeah. and just say, of all the people that ride out of your barn, how many of those people would, would get on their horse but I'm not sure that those are the people because you know well, no, I, I think those are the people right. with mm -hmm. much more expensive horses. Mm -hmm. But how about that Western farm across from Yellow Barn? Those are the people Absolutely. that they go along the side of the road, dodging okay, the traffic. Can we not talk about? I've seen down. so many dangerous things from that farm on the side of the road. No, no, but I'm, but I'm just. <laughs> I've had that, to stop and help that I farm. Mean, oh. You know, I mean. So, but you're right, and that, and that, but that, those are all the, that, that, there's a lot of benefits out of the survey. Yeah. The kind of riding people do, and you know, what, what is our, what is our demographic? And mm -hmm. other than just a handful of farms that I'm familiar with, I don't know. 
Uh, you know, I see drop. Yeah, that's I see a hard. I don't know what's mm -hmm. back there. It, it, it does. It's it's I hard. I assume they're all hunter jumpers and, and dressage people. That seems mm -hmm. like what everybody does. Yeah, but in the in the big show barns, those are generally not going to be the people. On Wood Road, I see people from Wilson Farm and stuff like that on the road all the time. But yeah. I mean, and you know, with Julie, who knows? Maybe as the country club opens up this fall, you know, she may say, "Okay, gosh." You know, if there was a nice path that could get from yeah, point A to maybe. point B, mm -hmm. maybe uh, they would utilize that. No doubt. No doubt. So, so I, I take it, so as a equestrian community, the committee's not interested in having a trail now. Oh, I, think I don't think that. I don't think that's, yeah. We gave quite a bit of input mm -hmm. uh, when the trail consultants came I think okay. it's a question of trying to figure out what we want and where we want it mm -hmm. and how do we want right. it. I haven't seen anything uh, since our, See, our see but those questions of where, well, the, that, so that, that has... So the prior plan is on the website. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, but as far as where to put the trails, question. that's something right. that has to come Very from... Different. The committee from individual people like oh my gosh you know what here you know boy it makes sense to try to you know go from this preserve over to here because that connects a certain you know stretch or band and stuff like that well you say that and i'm not doubting you that you see people riding on the road that have come from elsewhere right so as you circle that might be a starting place um i the only places i ever see people riding on the road are sort of um Freemanville, and it looks like maybe they've been at Wood Road somewhere yeah, here mm -hmm. in this general area. Yep. And occasionally I see them on, I'm not good upside down. I think it's on Providence Road. Yes. Somewhere in here. I sometimes see Old people. Providence? Are, yeah. Look down by Mill Spring? That way? No, no, that's New Providence. New Providence. This side of the. Yeah. Um, Where Carol lives and off by, by Bethany. The, the crossroads there? No, it's actually kind of closer to the Union restaurant. Yeah. In that sort of Yeah, because, yeah. yeah, you know, I mean, I could see connecting Landrum up to Phillips Circle. Sure. I mean, that would mm -hmm. be, that'd be a great loop. I mean, trust me, I, I, don't, I don't know, I can't read maps upside down either, but if I really think about, you know, we, we really love to come out of our place, which is over here, there's Red Road. What's this? Here's Bethany Way. I'm right here. Yeah. So we'll come out of our place and come right here, and I'll ride down and jump on Brittle, Brittle. which is here. And we'll ride. We can ride all the way here. We can ride all the way down here. Yeah. Then we can jump over here and ride Phillips Circle. So we can ride all the way from our house all the way to here. Mm -hmm. Now, this little stretch right here is a little dicey. Yeah. It's, you know, put, put it this way, we hold our breath from about there <laughs> to there. Yeah, and so if you connected Brittle up along here yeah. and then along Hopewell sure. up to Red, then that, that connects those people and gives them access to that. Uh, yeah. And I think a crossing would be important. Right, and yeah, yeah. And that's what... Uh, so then I'm also thinking, just an excuse me, because I'm just thinking... We don't know how many people are going to use this who live off this, but we might have more ability to have people who maybe want to trailer in. Like, and I look at where where would they trailer in? Where would they put drop a park a trailer that they could utilize these? Like, right, if we right here, right here, they can do it at the schools. Sure. That we know that. I don't know that. Well, I can't. When answer we set up the original trail committee. Those were supposed to be the trailheads for. The whole Milton well, Trail. I, remember, I know the city has to, you know, we have an agreement that, with that them. Holiday ride. Mm -hmm. um, the parking was going to be at Birmingham Falls, and it was going to be on the road. That, so and apparently, as, that part of it. And, and as part of an equestrian trail, mm -hmm. as part of our submission, we say, and you know, Summit and the uh, Birmingham Falls to be used as trailheads for parking trailers. Okay. But, you know, the city council doesn't know, you know, this committee being the horse people, you know, we got to try to put something down on paper and then we can give it to them and they can polish it. One of the things Courtney and I were talking about is that, man, so if they mark the farms on here, 
through the GIS. Right, you say that would be helpful. Yeah. GIS, you put that on the map. Yeah, and so if we have that information. That would be really know, good, because we know, could actually look at that. What we always had is how many farms are there, mm -hmm. how many horses mm -hmm. are there, we don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, they have some idea. But now we mm -hmm. have some data. <laughs> I w honestly wish I would drive around and see more of it, but I feel like in the 11, 12 years I've been here, mm -hmm. I've, I've seen it reduced so drastically, the horses that I've seen walking, and really even on Wood Road. Mm -hmm. that They used to be on Wood Road a decent amount, but it, they're not... It's not half as prevalent, I think. Don't you agree on wood? I mean, well, I'm out there like four times a week. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, there's a lot of foot traffic, and I think that probably yeah. kind of has decreased some of that. Mm -hmm. But then the other the other interesting one would be, you know, wood up to Brittle, or wood to Nix. You know, and that's that section along Birmingham. And for that part, that could go all the way up to the corner into the park. Well, I think that's a fun idea. I mean, one of my big pushes all along, Susan, I remember back when we were on the tree orders committee, you know, the one guy got so irritated with me because he's like, well, you got your farm now, you don't want anybody else to come. You want everybody else to come. It's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> You're like, but, absolutely you know, because, you know, you know, they were all the subdivision people, mm -hmm. and I was like, you know, no more subdivisions. Mm -hmm. you know, we yeah. Have, we need more farms, right? right? Things like this will make people want to buy farms. Mm -hmm. Because, right. you know, you, then all of a sudden, if you live on three acres and have a horse, mm -hmm. you can go somewhere. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, where else people might go a lot bother because they're not going to get a trailer out like a horse. Mm -hmm. well, they can just but, jump out and go down then, the driveway. And get then it road. really makes us an equestrian community. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but and, and then I will say that, you know, several of our city council members are very equestrian from mm -hmm. mm -hmm. th thankfully for us. Mm -hmm. So I know they're very much interested in trying to, you know, improve our property values as farm owners, and you know that is how we ultimately become more of an equestrian community is by having more infrastructure and that attracts people to invest in this place. You know, and I would just say, you know, because that's the state highway, I would just I would run that all the way down. Just, 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 just so. have a pint of Guinness. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> but you know, but that way, if it's part of the cross section, mm -hmm. then that makes a lot of plan. The question becomes on Providence. You know, you, I think did you say you saw some? Uh, I did. Okay, so if it makes sense to you know have uh, a side path on one of those sides, and then so then we got Nick's, and then the. Mm -hmm. Lakapani property is, gosh, where is that? That's, uh, so there's Cox. So is this, is this the new preserve over at Lakapani? Uh, it's overall from the Somewhere, yeah. I've never even seen that property. No, I haven't either. It's so right. it must be, it must yeah, be. Yeah, because you go down, right. I'm pretty sure that's yeah. it, you know. And so. Yeah, and there's no, no, that's all open back there with lakes and everything, so it must be here, right? Mm -hmm. But, but this whole corridor is going to explode. And so if we, know, if we know some of that's going to be equestrian, then we would want to have some of that staked out as uh, a trail. Sure. And I will tell you that Mill Springs Academy has a lot of fields. It's, it's mostly fields. The buildings are sort of all right up here. And... Um, I don't know about the current head of school, but uh, that might be something to tie into as well because they used to be hating. Blackie Road, right? I mean, sorry, the, the last coffee is right at the top of this L. Oh, okay. So, okay. So it's it's okay. So this is it right here, kind of. It's yeah. in the square. Yeah, and this is this is not trash more. Not trash more. Well, I'll say that this is not even milk down here. This is all Roswell. Yeah. Yeah. Outside, yeah. So yeah. So I guess, you know, the, uh, so, you know, once again, process and, you know, kind of gets us thinking a little bit. Maybe, Courtney, if we can get another map with the farms located mm -hmm. and then next session we can kind of, you know, put this, but like we can kind of, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I, just, I guess I have a vision of it being kind of the way the sidewalks are, which is 
I knew what you're going to say. And then somebody comes in and there's a mm-hmm. sprint sidewalk. And then nothing. And then nothing. Mm-hmm. So when I worked in mm-hmm. those sprints and I would walk from my house at Gates Mill, which is, you know, right next door. Mm-hmm. Gates Mill had a great little sidewalk. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mill Springs had a great little sidewalk. Mm-hmm. But at this one place, it didn't. And there was a tree and I had to step out into the road, New Providence, going downhill on that curve. And it was... You know, we, we did have a child actually get hit. Um, he was not yes. injured. Mm-hmm. His backpack and laptop the front of it, but he was yes. sort of across from us. Okay. Because people would just... You know, but the city has a sidewalk fund to fill in the gaps. I mean, mm-hmm. that would have been a well, great... That would have been a but great... Mm-hmm. I mean, I didn't know right. that. Right. But I think, you know, with this, once again, you know, for me, one of the main goals with this is, you know, coming up with that horse trail for the city because boy, we got a great park going on in that northern mm-hmm. area. But if we can come up with a trail plan, and gosh, our original trail committee, I mean, we had 80 miles of trail. Now, are 80 miles of trail gonna be built? No. Right. Not, <laughs> not, not, <laughs> in my, not, not in my life. Lifetime, exactly. Yeah. But you know, at least there's a plan. And so as things kind of happen, things unfold and you know, so I think, you know, at least we become part of the part of the plan. Right now, we're not part of the plan. That's a good point. Good. Well, I think that's a good discussion. Mm-hmm. Okay. Keep well, pushing on. Okay. Good start. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, let's see, unfinished business, the farm equestrian survey update. Courtney. Yeah, so uh, Robert is going to pull up the, has the survey results up there. They're impossible to read, I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> um, but I sent you all a link. Um, and what I wanted to talk about was what we want to do with this information. Um, we talked a little bit about, um, uh, of course, adding the addresses. Um, people who put their address, adding that to the map we have. Um, Let me pull it up so I can read those off since it's so hard to read. Um, So we had 350 respondents to the survey. Twenty percent live on a farm, uh, 80 percent do not. Seventy percent identified as um, horse farm. Other livestock was uh, about 15%. Agricultural was 10, and other uh, was a little bit less than 10. Other farm animals, uh, 60%, or close to about 55% answered <clears throat> yes. Uh, the rest responded no. Uh, people who ride, um, does someone in their house ride? Practice an equestrian. Let's see what it says. An equestrian discipline. And that was. Like yeah, about. Yeah, yes. And then um, 67-ish percent, no. I didn't hear that. What was that number? I couldn't, I can't read it. My LASIK is failing me. Yeah, it's, um, well, it's not super clear. It's like 30, it's about 33, 34% yes, and about 67, 68% no. Robert, can you scroll up so they can see the equestrian discipline? Oh, yeah, yeah. Which, what's the question? If well, you can scroll down. The disciplines. There we go. Keep going. Right there. So it gave me some hope that um, 25% ride Western. That gave me a little mm-hmm. bit of a 
glimmer, <laughs> glimmer um, of uh, energy. And look at the trail ride. Didn't make me want to uh, put our house in the market and move the ball ground. <laughs> <laughs> look at the recreational and the trail ride. Mm -hmm. That's big. That is pretty big. Yeah, I mean, that's huge. So that's 110 respondents um, out of 350. That's not bad. Um, an yeah, answered those questions. That's the question I was saying on the right, Chrissy. Would you like your farm to be listed in the Milton yeah. Equestrian? Okay. No. You're right. <laughs> like, You're right. Wow. That was, that was pretty obvious. Yeah, yeah but I, mean, I put no for our farm. I don't really. Yeah, I, don't I don't want to. A lot of it are private farms. They yeah, because if you're a personal cool. farm, I don't want to yeah. advertise that. Well, I mean, what was the question? Would you like your farm to be listed in the Milton Equestrian? What? Directory. But is that only for commercial farms, or is that for all farms? I, I assumed it was more for commercial. I was thinking it was. Like I said, we never got the survey, so um, I was thinking maybe that was just a community directory of saying, you know, would everybody like to list well, their farms? I think we have to be a little bit clear. There was some blowback on social media when this first came out because I knew that there would be because people were like, "Oh, is this some underhanded way of getting?" us to pay more taxes or is that what they to said? figure out this yeah huh. and so wow. you know yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. I and, and I knew that was gonna happen and I you know responded and said no is that a <laughs> and, Facebook thing uh, next door next door and I didn't I see that on next door that's invited funny. them to uh -huh. uh, you know come to a meeting so that they could better understand mm -hmm. what we're all about and that it had nothing to do mm -hmm. with the city mm -hmm. as much as you know trying to promote but yeah, there was a lot of people get very <laughs> sort of paranoid about what's the city up to and how are they trying to get us. And uh, I'm thinking, no, we're just trying to make it nice for everybody, at least in this room, you know. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Very interesting. So then there were a, a variety of responses um, to the acreage of, of the farm, which we could we could clean that up and put it in a graph. Um, we didn't ask it. We, we, let, we left it open-ended for people to just enter how many acres they have instead of putting it on like a sliding scale or a graph. So we could clean that up. Um, horse, a number of horses the same way. But we wanted... Um, that was an important question, right? That, that was what came up. Do we know how many farms we have or how many horses people have on their farm? Um, and then other animals, a variety of answers. Rabbits, chickens, goats, donkeys. Um, Can we go back up to the how many horses do you have? Mm -hmm. I find that number kind of interesting. There's not a lot of big numbers there. Mm -mm. I mean, there are not a lot of people with 25 horses on their farms or... You know, so that tells me that there's more private farms than there are commercial barns, right? There's a, there's a couple that are decent size right there. But if you look, there really aren't a lot. But you can count on one hand how many have 20 plus, right? Yeah, so that is interesting. So it tells you most, so hence it is an equestrian community. People yeah. have their horses at their... Smaller farms. Yeah. And I, I have come across people who don't know anything about the equestrian committee, and I always bring it up if they say they're from Milton. And a number of people have horses that they don't ride. They're, they're literally pasture ornaments. Because this, I said, oh, I don't keep horses at my house because I like to go on vacation. She goes, oh, we left for two weeks, and you know they have running water and, and grass, and, and they're, they're fine. fine. And I'm like, yeah, mine would all be dead in a day. You know? <laughs> but um, I was like, wow. So there is that. Mm -hmm. There are people must be like, more horses. like that. I don't know what they are. <laughs> yeah, I think those are those are those are very good metrics. They just they tell a lot. So okay, let's talk about what to do with that. Um, like I said, I can clean up the ones that aren't that clear. Um, you know, 138 acres, two acres, all that. Um, I can, like, you can do like a pie chart or something. Yeah. Like, you know, mm -hmm. like, you know, and, under, and, under five acres, over twenty or whatever. Yeah, and yeah, we and we can uh, just keep this to use uh, for future use. We can um, turn it into something uh, that you all present to council because um, they haven't seen it unless unless they filled out the survey. Mm -hmm. but they haven't seen the results. Um, we can. I mean, it's really up to you all. The uh, there's no limit to what you can do with it, really. Once again, publish or perish. I think, you know, mm -hmm. you put a lot of work into mm -hmm. that. I think that's worthy of 
uh, polishing that up and kind of framing it in a nice little uh, paragraph and presenting that to council. What is the story we want to tell using it? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's the question. So. And I think you know, you know, the story to me is okay. Kind of going back to our discussion. Okay, where where are these horse farms? And number one, how many are there? So that tells us that yes, you know. It confirms that we are an equestrian community, but then as far as planning some of the equine amenities, such as trails and stuff, being able to locate some of those places on the uh, the map, because if there are no horse farms on that particular road, it doesn't make right. sense to right. incorporate that in there. But, you know, if you have... And I, I think the number of trail and recreation riders that are showed here definitely backs up what you're yep. saying. So... And there's no, when, when, when people did the survey, they didn't have to put their address in. Mm -mm. But it would be really interesting to, to take one of those maps and to, you know, almost do the push pin thing where you kind of, you know, where, up and down each road where there's a farm and really take a step back and look at where the concentration of farms yeah. are. Well, that's what Courtney's going to do that, mm -hmm. and not with the push pins, but. Well, yeah, but we don't know how to do that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how do you. Yeah. Yeah, she can do that. She can do that. But all those farms, you don't know where those farms are located, yeah. but which street do you? Yeah. No, but from other data. Okay. And I wonder if we looked at Caleb's numbers of the acreage, you know, right. that he says, like, we have in Milton, and then we were able to look at these to see kind of as a percentage of how many people really wrote. If we have X amount of acreage over four acres, what percent of those people responded to this survey? Because then we could, you know multiply the number by if we were to assume that this was a good representation then we could multiply that by whatever percentage mm -hmm. probably didn't answer mm -hmm. the survey I don't know I mean I, I mean it may take some manual mm -hmm. work to go up and down each I mean and look at a GIS and try to figure out a way to I think this Courtney off. said she can they can just print that on there I think yeah well they can plot it Mm, the addresses that we have. Um, not everybody put their address in here because they thought it was going in a directory. So <laughs> we don't. Have or we were addresses. getting taxed or additional taxes. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, so yeah, but I'm gonna. I'll give them the information. Um, but uh, what I can do is get whatever presentation you all want ready for council, and then it'll be you all that presented it. So Great. happy to do like a PowerPoint or. Great. However, a PDF, however you all want to present it. That's up to I you. think I think our city council would find this very enlightening, mm -hmm. very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. it is. I think the general public would think it's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Oops. because some people are like, well, there aren't any horses here anymore anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's not true either. But Tony, mm -hmm. how about you present it? Unless Julie wants to present yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, Julie. Julie's the chairperson, yeah. so I don't... I think we would know. need to have her input before yeah, we... Yeah, I think we definitely need to let her, you know, kind of have that opportunity. Mm -hmm. So Plus, she's pretty good at it. Mm -hmm. And Larry and, and Susan, mm -hmm. I'm sure, have yeah. mm -hmm. things to say. So, uh, so if you all... So when we... Chris, are you taking notes? I just saw a lot of notes, right? I was like, I hope those are minutes. So I'll send you a template to put those in, and then we send those out to the group. To the group. Um, maybe you can send back, like, what, what do you want that story to be? And that'll help me guide um, what the PowerPoint looks like instead of just survey results. So we can add some photos and, and whatever. Um, and then you all can talk amongst yourselves about who's going to, who's going to present. Uh, I don't know if you want to wait till next month to talk about that. You can talk about it in an email chain. However you want before the meeting need to talk about what is the story we want to tell. Yes. What are we, what are we trying but to But I think we mm -hmm. need everybody's input on right. that, not mm -hmm. just ours mm -hmm. currently here. Yeah. Um, and at that point, we'll probably be up to about the next meeting. Okay. And we can decide who's going to present. Yep, agreed. And then it can get done. Okay. So why don't we challenge everyone on the committee to submit to Courtney why why they think the survey was was done and and what what its use is well i think for me maybe because i'm very visual i would like to see the the pie chart type graphs uh will mean a lot more to me than 
you know, a list of numbers. Mm -hmm. So I would like to kind of see it fixed up. I don't Mm -hmm. know how long that will take, but that would really help me think about what's it telling me and what can I say about it? I'll do a draft of that. Okay. Um, In the next couple of weeks, send that out. You all look at it and then we'll go from there. But that just so you don't like the bar graft. Bar graphs are fine. Okay. It's these yeah. numbers. You're it's the about. numbers. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. 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 Three cows, two pigs. Three cows, two pigs. Five of those in a Bar graphs are fine. Great. Great. I like the bar is fine. Yeah. Great. Okay. Great. Yeah, that's easy. Well, you know, the number of horses, the number of acres in the farm, and all mm-hmm. those, I think we can visualize those and really come up with a story to tell from that. Yeah. All right, that is all I have on the survey results. I think it was a great exercise. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Kudos to everybody for really driving that home. I think it was a good idea. And if y'all send me a link, I'll be happy to take the survey. <laughs> <laughs> I closed it. Right? You didn't get it, see? I think there's, a, there's something to be said for that. Because, me too. Yeah. I mean, I get sick okay, all the time. I, I do too. Yeah, no, I got it. I lost it afterwards because I, I was like, I was the same thing. Yeah, oh, you, you didn't. didn't I haven't filled it out. Uh-uh. Oh, yeah. really? That's what I'm saying. Is I that's why that was kind of my point of asking that question on Caleb's numbers, just because I was just wondering if we just looked at how many There's responded right versus here. how many tracks. I know. There truly 75% are. Seventy-five percent didn't get it. Wow. So what is, what does that tell us, Courtney? Um, I, mean, I thought three fifty was a pretty nice number of, of respondents. But we got, you know, three equestrians sitting in the room right here that did not get the survey, which tells me there's probably a lot more. Yeah, sorry, I was checking. Um, I don't know why. I didn't send you all the final link after the preview. Um, unless I thought I had your preview answers, but it didn't. Anyway, sorry. I'm multitasking. I'm not good at it. Um, me neither. <laughs> so, uh, I... I mean, it went, so it went out to all of our, supposedly, all of our newsletter subscribers. But you all are that, you said. I, I get an email every week saying yep. um, the city council agenda for the meeting coming up is X. And, yeah, and this went out to that same list. Like the, the, so we have different lists. So a list of newsletter subscribers, a list of media contacts, a list of, like, we, we could have a list of, like, farm owners. Um, and we, we separate out those lists. But this one out to the big list which is everybody subscribed to the newsletter. So I don't know why it wouldn't be delivered in every mailbox. No, um, and then we also spam. put it on social media. Yeah, I mean, I clean spam every day, I, so it doesn't get yeah. too big. But right. I asked, I asked Sarah, my wife, she didn't get it. Yeah, and you always get the, you do always get the council update? I get the council updates. But the other day, right after I asked that question, I got something about this, the news But I don't know that I've ever gotten that before. Mm. So on a good note that there has to be far more equestrian numbers if there's a way to capture that. Because if if we feel like these numbers are impressive and we know as a group Mm -hmm. that there's obviously a lot that either didn't get it or didn't answer it if they did get it, then if we could somehow even send it out again or Mm -hmm. target something else, then maybe the numbers that we actually present could be even more substantial. Agree. I got something the other day called the September 2020 newsletter. Yes. Well, right, well that's, yeah. That's Same the list. first time I've ever seen one of those. <laughs> I well, don't have, I must have fallen off the list because I'm, I'm scrolling back. And I'm right. Not, Nothing. Um, well, let me reopen, let me reopen this survey and at least send it to the equestrian committee. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Make might, sure they get it. We might skew the, skew the, kind of important. Um, and then we'll, uh, we can consider like changing questions or I don't know. Um, how, what was it titled to think about how, let me look. I think she gets just Milton equestrian committee survey. So yeah, I will do that. Great. I have to kick Thanks. somebody. We only have so many licenses, so I have to kick somebody off to get on. So that'll be parks is using it right now. So I don't want to kick them off while they're using it, but I'll do that tomorrow. All right, so kind of along the lines of uh, Tony's uh, new business, the purpose of the MEC, the horse statue project, and it's really kind of evolved into two different concepts. One, 
before they put the little bronze horse in the uh, roundabout here, I thought, oh my gosh, you know, equestrian community, wouldn't it be amazing to have an equestrian uh, bronze in every uh, roundabout? And so one, one project would be to just have people donate money for a particular statue. Uh, you know, here's one with a, a girl standing next to her horse. I thought this particular company was very interesting. They had a variety. Uh, what's the cost? Out of curiosity, what, what's so this one? Cost, so this, the galloping horse, he's 16 grand. Well, not terrible. I was I actually, I, did, I thought it would be more than that. I know. Yeah, I thought, uh, so is it, so is it a fire glass? Like, bronze. Is it really? Bronze. Okay, so that's a traffic hazard. How big is it? In the middle of the... Yeah, if someone hits that, like, it's, like, solid So bronze. this one? Like, so that one's fiberglass. It is. Mm -hmm. But, okay, Painted well, bronze. they did a darn good job. Because they did. They I was going to it doesn't look fiberglass. Right. It may have to be repainted from time to time. Sure. Because oh, we that, have... That marble ball statue is fiberglass? It is. But, I mean... Mm -hmm. But they're beautiful. But, <laughs> I think there's know. a picture going around social media of a teenager sitting on that board. Probably. <laughs> Oh, really? Okay. It had on a... Uh, Not mine. <laughs> right? You know, like, Where'd you see that? When you go to Lexington, you know, I've seen some of their uh, bronze sculptures and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yep. And it seems like even if you mounted it up on a pedestal or something, oh, maybe. then, you know... Yeah, if you get it high enough, maybe people won't sit but, uh, on it or crash into it. So, so one concept would be to try to, I guess, what would the next step be to submit to... Council the idea of branding each of the roundabouts with a uh, privately funded uh, patron bronze horse sculpture. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I talked to Sarah Ladart today. Um, she is on the, she's our economic development manager, and she is on the arts council. Um, and they had an idea for this sort of project. Um, a while back and she brought it before council this is it was a, a different council um, but has already done a lot of research on it um, and so she and she offered up that information to us if we wanted it so she has done a lot of the roundabout research a lot of the horse research um, maybe some of the traffic studies um, about the, the composition of the horses uh, so I can get that from her and we can see um, what that looked like then and how we can update it uh, but we also, I probably would, I would think about a funding source, and I would think about, unless it's just a budget request, and then identify the roundabouts you want Yeah, I would look at this decorate. as, I mean, kind of individual or corporate sponsorships. And then, you know, maybe you have, like, the UPS roundabout, and they have, uh, you know, mm -hmm. they go for the, they she, go for the yeah, Mac Daddy. She said she had, had, know, she had some from like uh, Gas South and, you know, different corporate sponsors. So we'll yeah. get that information. From yeah, there. because I think that, you know, once again, going along with the whole concept, wouldn't that be amazing? I mean, and talk about a work of art having, you know, beautiful bronze sculptures, you know, all equestrian themed around the city. I like that. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, well, yeah. What count will have yet? I know, I know. They had a western. That's true. They had a western. How much is that one? I'm just kidding. Yeah, no. Yeah, Courtney will buy that one for you, yeah. Tony. That one has to be yeah. done in burlap, though. Yeah. But I'm I just, sorry, I, Tony. I didn't, I didn't print the whole catalog. I can forward the, uh, the catalog to everyone. So that, that was one concept with the horses. The other, the other concept, and I'm sure everyone's been to a, a big city, you know, even over at Athens, you see the big fiberglass bulldogs. And... You know, the one thought was, gosh, and what started me on that whole journey was just thinking about, boy, wouldn't that be cool to have the Milton horses? And so I kind of investigated how you do that. And this one company, they have a whole little program. And I can't remember if I sent that around. I think so. To, and so, you know, you may have looked at it or had a chance to see it. But, boy, they really kind of cookie cutter that. But since this one's more of a fundraiser thing, I think, isn't there, uh, I think the the person who I replaced, the one she leaving yep. to become mm -hmm. like a... Right, Larry has filed the paperwork for a 501c3. Uh, Come on, Liz. 
Liz, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so, so Liz will be on that board, and uh, yeah. so this this may be a better thing right. for them because basically you would get either individuals mm -hmm. or a business to buy it, and these are only eighteen hundred dollars if you buy one. The lady said, "Oh, you buy a bunch, it goes way down," but then you paint them, and so whether the high schools get involved with painting them or you know the arts council but it could be a really neat community thing and then at the end they can auction them off or uh you know but i i just think that that is is kind of a a neat thing that uh but i think probably maybe more appropriate for liz right yeah for the, they're going to take funds for it but it's still a, it's still a, a, a milton project and an equestrian project so and the arts council has said that they would like to be in, involved um, okay just in in the public art aspect of that, if it's going to be public art. So I guess do people do they like the concept of the whole fiberglass horse thing and? Where would they be placed? So they could be placed, you know, gosh, you know, in front of businesses, uh, you know, anywhere through Milton, you know, in front of your house if you want to buy one for your house. I mean, you know. What was it that used to be out in front of all the businesses? Around Atlanta, what was it? The, was it the Bears or the? Oh yeah, there was something for a while. For a long time, every time yeah. you turn around, it was a different one. That, and it was it was kind of that same and idea. I've, I, and I've been in different cities where they have, you know, painted ponies or different different animals that represent something. Sure. Yeah. I think it's a cool idea. Yeah, and the fun thing with this particular company was, they even had some uh, little colts. So, I mean, you know, you could do a little bit of a, a mix or you could do all, all one or, you Maybe know. Maybe Yeah, yeah. yeah they Those had, will sell. Yeah, so they <laughs> had, yeah. But, but I think as, as the Crabapple area becomes, has more commercial development, like all the stuff that's going in, and as well as over on the Highway 9 side, that those are businesses that there's foot traffic as well as driving traffic and that's where things like this could really have an impact and i think it, it pulls the community together because over on highway nine they're so mm -hmm. commercial that yeah. sometimes they may not feel like they're part of that equestrian mm -hmm. exactly that's a good point good okay so i guess uh, so how do we how do we communicate with the arts People uh, I will send their contact information. Bill Purdy is the chair. Okay. Email open to send you all the link to that trail prioritization plan. And then one one last uh, thing: Is there any value for us to come up with a motion for the city planners that? kind of goes through some of those concepts, you know, whether it's, you know, naming new streets after equestrian themes, uh, incorporating uh, or encouraging development of the equestrian venues such as the polo fields uh, or show facilities, show barns, or uh, uh, incorporating equestrian things like hitching posts you know, maybe along the road or something like that, or the horseshoes in the concrete. Do we want to craft a uh, uh, a little paragraph or a motion, or I mean, how do we how do we communicate with with them? Do you, with, do you want to communicate with community development or with yeah, council? Well, I think community development. I mean, I don't know that that really has to go through. Council, I mean, mm -hmm. you know. Not yet, anyway. I'm sorry? I said probably not yet. No, but I... go to council at this point when it's in mm -hmm. the early stages, right? Mm -hmm. Probably just community development. Sure. Just to start a conversation, is that what you mean? Yeah, and, About you know, what? because community development, gosh, you know, they got so much stuff going on, but now it seems like, man... When they're well, right, and so and we're about to start um, comprehensive planning, yep. which is the, yep. the twenty year plan, and yep. so it is super important to get involved in that. And so there is a community meeting the twenty fourth. It's virtual, um, and then uh, there are comprehensive plan advisory committee meetings. Um, but there'll be a bunch of these because that's a bit that's a huge project because it's so long. So I would. I would it, 
I think yeah. it's important to get it involved yeah. in those, um, so at least participate virtually. Um, and then maybe email uh, Parag, the director of community development, um, with your with your paragraph. And Specifically, I, I, I what serve you... on the comprehensive committee. Fantastic, good. So. Specifically, what do you want in that? Just so I have that capital. So, I mean, and I'm just throwing it out, but mm -hmm. if, you know, I think uh, naming new streets after equestrian themes. So it's sort of like adding equestrian flair. I mean, that's not quite right. the right word, but right. equestrian theme touches in exactly. different places throughout the community. Exactly. And those would include uh, naming new streets after equestrian themes, uh, you know, making a horseshoe trail in the sidewalk. Uh, you know, that's such a simple thing, but man, you know, kids, they get excited, you know, and they say, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. It could be so cool with that too. Just like I was just at University of Florida and the whole, you know, the main walkway to the stadium, it's bull gators. But that could be such a great fundraiser for the equestrian committee that could funnel into that 501c if you named the, if families donated a horseshoe, like they do a bull gate, every bull gator's like, go gators from this family, yeah. or something like that. And if we named, like, you know, you name a brick or something like that right. in yeah, school. You get, so you get a name, you know, right. a nameplate, yeah, or something. Yeah. Buy a horseshoe yeah. for mm -hmm. 100 bucks or something. Yeah, okay. and then that feeds into. The 501. That feeds C3. our C3. Yeah. 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 That's a great idea. So then, uh, so how do we, what, what steps do we need to go through to create the horseshoe fundraising? Uh, because well, that, again, that would be something for Liz's group, wouldn't it? It would. I would present it to Liz um, or Larry. Yeah, you just call Liz online and talk yeah. about it. Because yeah, I just I thought since it involves the city yes. and putting the horseshoes in concrete. Right. Oh right, right, right. Um, we're not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's not clear. <laughs> that takes way more approval um, than we all have, and so I would run it by Liz first. Make sure it's a viable fundraiser that they want to do, um, and then we can work on those logistics like. What, what sidewalks, where, where do the horseshoes come from, how are we advertising it, um, yeah, how and would you, how would super you specifically, the where's you're, the money going? In the horseshoes, and there's, there's got to be a company that does that. There's all kinds of mm -hmm. hurdles and hoops to go through to get there. Yeah. But I, Is I it a new sidewalk, right. or are we in putting them into old sidewalks? Like, Well, that's not easy to do. Well, right. I was just thinking any, any new stuff that's going on around here, mm -hmm. and that's why I was kind of you know, ANSI just to communicate with Prague or someone to give them the idea, oh, because mm -hmm. it's easy to get a box of horseshoes mm -hmm. and that doesn't mm -hmm. really cost much and you'll plunk, plunk, plunk. Right. I mean. But if you want to edge and someone's then, knees in there. I know, right. that's, that's, a that's, another, that's another level of complexity. Yeah, that's another level. It is, right. So, so, all these things have to be considered. Yeah. But we can. Um, we don't want you not to have anything to do. But no, thanks. Thank you. He's like, whoa. Hold on. Um, but I at least want to know that uh, one, the nonprofit is a nonprofit um, and can take your money, the money raised from any funds like that. And then we have to look at how separate it has to be from the equestrian committee um, before we even get into horseshoes and concrete. So. I would check with Liz and Larry and see what the, uh, yeah, what the process is. I think it got slowed down by COVID. Okay. As did, As did the world. The world. You yeah. know, hitching post. Because we got trails coming down to the old blind dog. You have to hook that horse up. Oh my God! Someplace. How cute is that? Can you even imagine a horse tied up outside the old blind dog? <laughs> All that thing was in there, nothing would get loose. It's, it's going to be a western <laughs> That's a <photo> horse. Off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, well, pretty cool. any other little details that people can think of that, uh... How does the street naming thing work? Don't the developers name the streets? I don't know. I think they do. Oh. Well, right, I remember, so for Heritage Walk, we had some input in that. Okay. Because it's a city street. Um, I think on this second part of it that goes up by the new round, the horse roundabout, um, we did like confer with them. Yeah, um, I guess it ended up being heritage. Walk, but would. I was just because 
Yeah, only subdivision streets are developers. The developers. Private roads, right. right. But we're not necessarily, we, we, it could, we, they, we could encourage that. I don't know if we could tell a developer that. Well, you it. can't tell them, but we, we want the city planners mm -hmm. to just kind of encourage, because even like Heritage, that would have been not nice to have thoroughbred way or something you mm -hmm. know yeah I mean, yeah I, I was here when they did that that was a council decision um but i don't know how much community input um they took so it's uh, you know so i think it's worthwhile it's for worth us to input, kind of yeah. throw throw it out kind of like so the that, triple crown yeah. subdivision concept yeah each, exactly each street in there yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. oh that's true you know, yeah all those kind of places it's like oh cool farm no they're not farm oh okay great any other ideas Concepts. No, I think you're great. Productive. Great meeting. Yeah. Great meeting. Yeah, productive. Yeah. Thank you so much. And thank you. We all. adjourn. Thank yeah. You. Motion to adjourn. Second. Oh, thank there you. you. All right. Good to see everybody. Yeah. Good to see you. Yeah. No. So That's where is your lovely daughter going? To oh, see? shucks. I had one other. Uh, oh, okay. Shoot. Good. Okay. Good. 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 Um, can I see that? I heard uh, a lot of good stuff. Yes. I'll email them to you. Okay. Yeah, because there's a template.